Today, I will be presenting Lottie Reiniger. Lottie was a German animator and a film director who was a pioneer of silhouette animation. Lottie's full name is Charlotte Lottie Reiniger. She was born on June 2nd, 1899 in Berlin, Germany. Lottie was a very creative child who was encouraged by parents Carl and Eleanor to express her creativity. At a young age, Lottie found a huge interest in Chinese paper cuttings and shadow plays, which is an ancient form of storytelling. Lottie built her own puppet theater. She wrote her own stories, and she created her own cutouts. After creating the puppet theater, she was able to express her ideas and present them to family and friends. As Lottie went into her teen years, she found the love of cinema, which was still in its early days. Lottie found inspiration from French director Georges Michel. These animated gifts are from Michel's film, The Astronomer's Dream. Lottie also looked up to Paul Wagner, who was an actor and director who created one of the film's earliest horror movies, Gollum. Lottie joined a film group that Paul Wagner belonged to. Lottie began to use her skills of making silhouettes during this time and was able to animate title cards for some of Wagner's film. As time went on, Lottie became more well known for her silhouette animations which landed her to be admitted into the Institute of Cultural Research, which was an experimental animation studio. It allowed Lottie to meet different artists, including her future husband, Carl Cook. Lottie went on to creating and directing different animated silhouette shorts. In 1919, Lottie animated The Ornament of the Heart and Love, which was her first ever animated silhouette short. This short was about a man and a woman who interact with one another to show their love while dancing. Lottie pulled inspiration from the Brothers Grimm. She would adapt their stories onto the screen. In 1922, she adapted Cinderella into a 12-minute silhouette. Lottie created her animations by drawing and cutting out each piece by hand. After many years of practice, she mastered the art of precisely cutting out these shapes. Each character needs to be cut out piece by piece, as well as props, the background, and foreground elements. She was able to quickly achieve this. The animation table consists of a table with the hole cut out and a sheet of glass placed over the hole, which was illuminated below. On top of the glass would be transparent paper, where the cutouts would be lay on top of. Basic stop-motion animation would be applied to the silhouettes while she moved each piece by piece while snapping a photo to each little change. Lottie had a lot of patience for this, as this is a time-consuming process that she did a lot on her own. In 1923, she was approached by Louis Hagen, who was a big fan of Lottie's work at the time. Germany was dealing with hyperinflation at the time due to the war, and to help, Hagen bought a large amount of raw film stock. He offered Lottie some of the film stock in exchange if she would create a full animated feature. For years, people saw animation for shorts only, but Lottie accepted the challenge. Between 1923 to 1926, she created her most famous piece, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, with the help from her husband, Carl Koch. With a runtime of 65 minutes, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed told a short invert version of the story, 1001 Nights. It was shot in black and white, then colorized with bold, bright colors. During the 1930s, Germany saw the rise of the Nazi party. Lottie and Karl themselves were not Jewish, but disagreed with what was going on in their country. In 1933, the couple tried to move away from Germany, but were unable to get permanent visas anywhere. For the next 11 years, the couple moved around, staying only as long as their visas would allow them to. During this time, Lottie was still able to create her beloved animations. In 1935, Lottie released Papa Gino, which is a 10-minute feature that delved into the adventures of the jolly bird catcher called Papa Gino. Sadly, in 1944, the couple had no choice but to return back to Germany due to Lottie's mother falling ill. During these times in Germany, the animation industry struggled immensely due to the fact that whatever was being produced was strongly controlled by the Nazi party. The Nazis wanted every film to show Germany in a positive and power way. Since Lottie was an animator, she had to create propaganda films during this time in Germany. Under Nazi watch, Lottie and Carl created The Golden Goose. The main characters are very simple people who overcome battles through hard work. This is exactly how the Nazis wanted their propaganda to be portrayed. 
But throughout the short, you can see that Lottie and Carl added anti-authoritarian themes to still somewhat stay true to themselves. Nine, Carl and Lottie finally were able to move to London and have permanent visas. In London, Lottie was able to reconnect with Louis Hagen and together they opened up Primrose Productions in 1953. creating short silhouette films that were based on Grimm's fairy tales for the BBC. In 1955, Lottie based an animation on the Brothers Grimm fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel. In 1963, Carl Koch, Lottie's husband, sadly passed away. Lottie decided to take some time, from, time away from animating, but once the 70s came around, her films were slowly getting rediscovered, which allowed Lottie to travel to new places to give talks about her career. 80th birthday, she received the award of the Order of Merit in 1979 in her homeland of Germany. Lottie passed away on June 19, 1981. Lottie is a huge inspiration and pioneer of her time. We can all take inspiration from her dedication and creativity. The work that we do in class may not be the same as animating, but all of Lottie's cutouts are very accurate to what she is portraying, just how we are learning to draw exactly what we see. Thank you.